welcome back to Completely Candid. I'm super excited because today's guest is going to be talking about life at York University and being in Schulich's BBA program. She's going to be talking about her experiences going from high school to life at York to life in her program and giving a little bit of advice at the end. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. And I really think this video is going to benefit a lot of you out there. Hello, Glory. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Thanks for having me. So great to be here. No worries. Thanks. Um, all right. So I thought I would just get started right away and get into the first question. So why don't you just tell me about you and your educational background? Yeah, for sure. So hello, everyone. Ash's channel watching. Um, I'm Glory, and I'm currently in my third year in the BBA program at Schulich, which is a part of York University. And I'm specializing in marketing and strategy and hopefully working to looking to work in the CPG space, retail space in the coming years. Wow, nice. That sounds cool. Um, so my second question was just, why did you choose York and your specific program? Yeah, I think for me, when I was deciding between universities, I was really debating between Schulich and AFM, which is the program you're in right now. And so in high school, like I wasn't quite sure yet, like what specific field I wanted to go into with business. And Schulich has a general program in the first two years where you get exposure to all types of business with like accounting, finance, marketing. And so I think just being able to solve the opportunity to like explore my interests and the fact that, you know, I'd be able to commute to school and still stay at home um, um, really just led me to Schulich. And Third question is, um, what's your end career goal? I guess I kind of have an idea from what you're saying, but um, just generally, like, where would you see yourself in 10 years? Yeah, in 10 years, um, I, I feel like I'm still trying to figure it out. I think for me in the short term, I know I definitely want to go into marketing, um, whether it be working in the CBG or the retail space and implementing um, various strategies in those space. Um, long term, I feel like I see my interest changing probably. Um, so I think I'm still trying to figure out long term, but I think in the short term, definitely heading into the marketing space. Yeah, no, I think that's a very realistic answer because I think 10 years is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so my first question is, do you live at school or do you commute and how do you like that overall experience? Yeah, so I'm a commuter. Everyone knows me as the girl who commutes. Um, I think definitely commuting is a new experience and one of the biggest changes when you're going from like high school to university. Um, it's definitely something that's very time consuming. So I think that's just probably one of the hardest parts about commuting, you know, the time that you have to spend going there and back and also the fact that it can get very tiring. Um, so it's not my favorite thing, but I think, you know, when you're choosing between commuting or staying on residence, for me personally, it's a sacrifice that I want to make in the time that I'll lose because it means that I'll get to come home to a warm cooked meal or I'll get to sleep in my bed in that night. So definitely, you know, not maybe one of the most positive parts about university, but, you know, it's part of the journey. Yeah. And that home cooked meal must be very nice. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> um, all right. So since you do go to a commuting school, um, what's like the best way to make friends there? Because I know I've heard some um, facts about how it's a little harder when you're commuting. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you're going to a commuting school, you know, people are in and out of the school, it's harder to see people. So I think one of the best ways to make friends is to just get involved. You know, there's so many clubs and opportunities at university. So getting involved any way you can is an opportunity for you to make friends and start building those relationships with people. Um, so that even when you're not seeing each other, you're, you can still connect with them outside of school through meetings or through the extracurriculars that you'll have. Um, I think just even just, you know, making an effort to keep in touch with people in a commuting school, because you're not seeing people, you really need to take that extra step and that extra initiative to, you know, message someone, see how they're doing, you know, see if they want to do go to an event with you or see if they want to do something with you. Um, and I think through that, that's how you're able to kind of make friends. Yeah, awesome. Um, and if you could describe your school in one word, what would that be? Ooh, um, I would say community. Um, <laughs> I think like for us, like we only have 400, 500 people in our year in general. And so, you know, across the four years, we're a very small school. And so everyone kind of, know, kind of knows each other and is familiar with each other. And so I feel like that makes for a nice community. Oh, well, that's awesome. Um, and what would you rate your food on campus? And what is the best food place for people to go to if they do attend York? Um, okay, I would say 
our food is a seven out of 10. I would say it's pretty good. We have a lot of options. We have like an Osmos, um, Booster Juice, Popeyes, Pizza Pizza, Hero Burger. We have this Z-Teca place, which is like a Mexican place. Um, we have a shawarma place. So I think there's, you know, quite a bit of options. I think for me, you know, I'm Middle Eastern, so I love a good shawarma. Um, so definitely, I think Osmos and the shawarma place that we have are my top two places for food. All right. I'm going to be coming to York to try those. Yes. <laughs> um, and at York, what are the social dynamics like? And it, would you say it's a very competitive environment or a place where people aren't afraid to help each other? Mm hmm. Um, I think in my personal experience, like when I came into university, I was just kind of overwhelmed by the amount of support and help that I was getting in the program. Like I know like our class, our 22 class, we had a group chat on Facebook and everyone would be sending like textbooks and resources or like sometimes the answers to quizzes and things like that in that chat. And I think especially like in that orientation week that we had, a lot of the upper years were so welcoming and were willing to kind of help us and, you know, give us the resources and the materials that we needed in order to succeed in that first year. So I think in my personal experience, I've definitely seen like a very helping culture, but I think naturally, like even just in any university, there's always, you know, some level of competition because, you know, everyone, you know, wants to succeed and do the best. So I think, you know, there always is a little bit of competition, but I think the theme at Shulik is a very helping and supportive culture. Oh, that's so nice. At York, what's the party life like? Would you say there is one or there really isn't? Because I do know you guys are commuting school as well. Yeah. So like for me, like I said, like I'm a commuter, so I'm not too sure, to be honest, about the party space, which probably, you know, speaks to the party life um, mm -hmm. at the school. But um, yeah, I think it probably, you know, if you live on res, you know, there might be a little bit more of that, but I think because it is a commuter school, there's not, it's not yeah. as heavily prevalent as maybe at, at some other universities. Right, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and for people who are going to maybe be commuting in the future, do you have any tips on how to make it a little more enjoyable? I think, you know, when you're commuting, like, especially if you're commuting from far, like, you lose a lot of time in that bus or in that subway or in that train. So I think, you know, if you're able to, like, download, you know, your PowerPoints or your textbooks ahead of time um, and be able to just use that time to read on the bus, you know, not do anything too heavy, like, you know, do any calculations or do anything too crazy on the bus. But even if you're just able to read or even listen to like a past lecture, I feel like you can really use that time wisely and um, and make up for some, some of the time lost just traveling. Um, but even more so, like if you're not able to, you know, do any schoolwork, like even just responding to emails or just, you know, preparing a list of things you need to do when you go home or things that you need to do the next day, using that time any way you can, I think is important. Um, and I think even just to contradict myself a little bit, like, obviously using time, using your time is important, but I think use that time to rest as well, because, you know, the day is long, the day's busy, you know, it's, it's, it's a grueling day. So if, you know, any time you can get that chance to rest, like use it to rest. Like I know for me, like in the mornings often, like I'd use that time to read, like for my class that I had coming up, but when I'm commuting back home, I'll just use that time to like sleep or just relax. Just so when I came home, I could, you know, get back into the swing of things. Right. Well said. Um, yeah. And for people whose parents are a little more concerned about safety issues, what would you say the safety at York University is like? Yeah, um, I would say it's like a 6.5. I think like in my personal experience, I haven't had any safety concerns. And especially like I'm someone who always travels like late in the night and I've ha never had anything happen. But I know there have been, you know, you know, various some incidents like that have happened off campus. So I would say overall, you know, it's a pretty safe environment. You know, it's always busy. There's always people. Um, but, you know, I think there have been some incidents that have occurred, you know, close to campus. Well, the first question is, what was your high school average getting into your specific program being in um, Chulik business? Um, I think my average was around, I think just like a flat 90. Okay, nice. Yeah. Good. Um, and what were some extracurriculars you did in high school when you were applying? And do you think that had a significant impact on you getting in? And um, in your in your opinion, do you think Shulik kind of looks at your grade more or your extracurriculars more? Yeah, um, I think extracurriculars are a really important part when you're applying to Shulik, but also just like any business university in general. Um, you know, for Shulik, they say they consider 50% academics and 50% extracurriculars. So, you know, if you're not as strong in the academic part, your extracurriculars really make up for it and vice versa. 
So for me, the extracurriculars that I got involved in when I was in high school was I was just a part of, you know, various clubs. So, you know, I did ESP, I did DECA. Um, and then, you know, I was also doing sports one year um, with basketball and then just, you know, volunteering, you know, with my church and um, with children as well. So those were some of the extracurriculars that I highlighted throughout my application um, and that they were able to look at and assess, you know, if I were to get in or not. Right. What criteria made you choose York University and your specific business program? Yeah, I think for me, the key part was just being about able to um, continue exploring my interests um, while in university. A lot of the other programs that I had applied to had specific, you know, business streams like AFM was specific to accounting and finance. You know, I applied to an HR program. I applied to a marketing program. But I think for me, you know, because it's grade 12 and it's still a little bit early, at least for me, like I didn't know specifically what I wanted to do yet. So in choosing Schulich, I was able to still kind of explore all the business streams and then make my choice from there. Um, but also when we, you know, when I was applying in that process, um, I had the opportunity to go to the campus and have like a tour and kind of meet some of the students there and see what it looked like. And so I think just, you know, when I went to the school, I really felt like this sense of community and I felt like, um, you know, it was going to be a good opportunity to learn as well, because at Schulich, the class sizes are really small. Like we only have like max 50 people in our classes. So I think just, you know, being able to um, still explore all the business streams and just be in this small class size and just the community factor. I think those three things really just drew me to Schulich. Right, awesome. Um, and in terms of applying to Schulich, what was the application process like? And do you have any tips for any of those high school students out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in terms of the application process, there is essentially a couple parts. So obviously you're gonna be sending your transcript and your grades to the university, but also um, in terms of the extracurricular side, you have to showcase and explain five different extracurriculars that you have. Um, and that's what you're going to be sending to the university. So I think just in terms of that part, you know, if you're in grade 10, grade 11, and you're not involved yet, find a way to get involved, whether it be in school or even out of school, anything that you do that shows that you're able, you know, to be a leader, you know, work in a team or collaborate with others, anything like that, you know, definitely showcase that on your application and find ways to get involved. Um, when I was going through that part in filling out my application, for me personally, like I saw, I got help from our librarian and I remember she helped me so much like with my editing and writing. So definitely I would recommend like get someone else to look over your essay and to help criticize it so that you can make it as strong as it can be. Because like I said before, people are looking at not just your grades, but also your extracurriculars. And then the part about the application process that I know was making me a little bit nervous was um, with the interview process. So when they're interviewing you, um, they ask you three questions and they usually tell you um, the first question, which is like a tell me about yourself, but then you get two other questions which you don't know. So something I would recommend for that interview process would just to be to kind of prepare um, a list of some of your strengths, some of your weaknesses, some examples of experiences that you've had in taking leadership. And the questions will essentially be centered around that. So if you're able to kind of essentially talk about yourself and where you're excelling and where you're, you know, you see areas of improvement, you'll be fine for the interview process. Um, and I think one big thing don't leave the interview till the last day. I know what happened in my year was that a lot of people, you know, were applying and submitting their videos on the last day and the website actually crashed, which was so stressful. I can imagine for people who are submitting on the last day, because, you know, you don't want the website to crash. You're not able, even able to like actually submit your video. So they actually, for my year, they extended the deadline by one day, but I think just regardless, you know, don't submit it on the last Day, try to get it done, you know, a couple days in advance or at least two days in advance so that, you know, you ensure that it goes through and you're good to go for your application. Right. Yeah, no, those are definitely some very solid points you put out there. So hopefully some of the students can benefit from those. Um, and in terms of the learning style, I know that these are the learning style is very important for students for, that are transitioning from high school to university. So could you maybe explain what your learning style is like? Is it very case based or? Um, yeah, kind of like examples of that. Yeah. Um, so at Schulich, I would say it's a good mix of 
group based projects and then just you know your typical individual work and assignments so I think that was probably one of the biggest shifts as well from like high school to university is just getting into the habit of doing more group work um so we had for example when you come into your first year one of the biggest you know courses that you're going to be taking is management 1000 which is solely a group focused course where every week you're working in the same group for the entire year or the entire semester and you have to like analyze like a different business and its operations so um there's courses like that and then there's also like your accounting and finance courses that are you know just mainly test based and quiz based right oh wow so you really have to be a team player in that one course <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's one thing you have to learn, you know, you got to learn how to, you know, work in a team and really collaborate with others because you're going to be doing that honestly throughout all your university years. And I think even when you enter the workforce, you got to learn how to like work with other people. Um, how challenging would you rate your program to be on a scale of one to 10? And do you mind rating it based on your first year, second year and your current year, which is mm -hmm. your third year? Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so I think in terms of how challenging the program is, I would say it's about a 6.5. I think in general, I think for me, what I found challenging was just trying to balance academics with extracurriculars, because when you're coming into a business program, you know, I think this is, you know, one of your next questions, but, you know, you have only 15 hours of class a week, you know, comparing to some of the other science programs where, you know, they have 15 hours plus like labs and tutorials, you only have 15 hours in business, but that's because, you know, there's that opportunity for you to get involved and have those extra curriculars to then showcase, you know, when you're applying for jobs. So I think just that time management aspect is what's, what, what was made it difficult. Um, I think in terms of my first year, I would say, you know, the difficulty was, you know, a seven because it was it's just a transition in adjusting, especially for me, you know, trying to adjust from having class every day um, to, you know, having class, you know, three hour lectures or, or having to commute. That was a big adjustment. Um, and in first year, one of the hardest courses is your stats course. Um, I could still I can't I still can't do stats for the life of me, but um, I think that's probably one of the hardest courses. I think second year definitely ramps it up in terms of difficulty. Um, I would probably say eight out of 10 for second year because um, I think you're just juggling so much more in second year. Second year is a lot of group projects that are all happening at the same time towards the end of the semester. So definitely I'd say second year is a little bit of a ramp up from first year. And then I would say third year is, you know, six out of 10. Um, you know, you're still juggling um, you know, multiple things, but in third year, you know, you've kind of got your stride in, into university and you're able to actually select more courses that you're interested in. So I think that's also what kind of helps make it easier a little bit. Nice. Um, and how many classes do you have to take per term and how many electives do you get? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so essentially each semester you take five courses. So you take four courses that are mandatory and then one course each semester, that's your elective. And that elective has to be elected, an elective from York. So you can take literally anything you want. I know my first year I took psychology and then my second year I took voice and speech and drama. Um, so yeah, you take five courses each semester. And um, when you get into your third year, you're able to take eight electives out of 10 courses in the entire year. So you definitely have more freedom um, when you get into your third year, because that's the year when you get to specialize and actually choose, you know, courses that are more appealing to you. Well, that's so cool that you get that many electives to choose from. How many hours on average do you, would you say you study in a day after you're done classes? It's a good question. Um, <laughs> it's hard to say, like, you know, I think there's days definitely where I'm more productive than others or days where, you know, I won't have anything to do after class. Um, so I think it really ranges. Um, I think like on a weekend when, you know, I don't have any class at all, it could be from, you know, six to eight hours, I would say. Um, and I think, you know, on other days where I'm more busy, it could be like two to three hours. Right. That makes sense. Um, and are you involved in anything um, in your school or maybe outside of it? Yeah, um, I think for me, that's literally one of the best part about university and so like when I came into my first year um, and then even till now like I just made a concerted effort to get involved and do different things so 
Um, currently, I'm part of my school's consulting club um, where, you know, I just finished my term of, you know, planning our annual conference. Um, but I've also been able to kind of just partake in like, really, I did intramurals one year. Um, I helped kind of plan um, our orientation week where we would welcome like the new first year students. Um, so those are some of the things I've just kind of been able to be a part of. In your program, are there any options for like a co-op internship program? And if so, how does that process kind of work to get that opportunity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we don't have a co-op, but, you know, we do have, you know, the May to August summer months off. So you're able to apply for various internships there. Um, every school has their own career portal where you're able to see like the different jobs and the different opportunities that are available. And so, you know, one way you're able to kind of, uh, you know, get into those internships or put yourself in a position to land an interview or get those internships is by attending, you know, various networking events, which again is also highlighted through your school's career portal. So I think it's just a matter of, you know, looking out, you know, when the time that the jobs come out, looking out for uh, the different events and um, opportunities that are available and then just applying. Right. All right, so now getting into the conclusion, um, do you mind just kind of talking about one thing that you wish you knew going into first year that um, you learned afterwards? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think coming into university, I was like so stressed and so focused on my grades. Um, and, you know, I'd literally freak out, you know, after I got one bad grade, but I would say, you know, to the people coming in, you know, don't worry about that bad grade or don't worry about if you don't do as well on like a test or on an assignment, like it's a learning process, you'll get better, you'll find ways to succeed. And ultimately at the end of the day, it's not the be all end all, you'll be fine. And um, it's just about like being able to kind of get that feedback and figure out where you went wrong. It's so funny because you, you'll you do bad on a test. You think, okay, that's it. My grade's done. Like I'm, it's over. And then you come to the end of the semester and, you know, sometimes you get a little help from the bell curve or, you know, something exactly. will end up ha happening and you'll be able to, you know, get the grade you ended up wanting. So don't yeah, stress. Exactly. <laughs> right. Awesome advice. Um, yeah. So that was kind of everything that I had. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me again. And I think a lot of the things you said are going to benefit students out there, either in high school or currently in school that are just trying to navigate all the stresses that they're going through. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Asha. And if anyone has any more questions, feel free to message me or reach out. I'd be happy to answer any more questions about Chulik or university or anything. <laughs> yes, I will add Glory's information into the bio. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a wonderful day and see you guys soon.